Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International news update. I'm joined today by Andrew Brady and Mary McLaughlin. Andrew, would you like to give us an update on USI and where we are? I'd be delighted to, Walton. Really pleased, in fact delighted, that over the last couple of months the substantial progress that we've made with the project and building an audience and getting people engaged and participating and a key part of that has been expanding our team mm -hmm. and we have recently been delighted that Mary agreed to work with us mm -hmm. to enhance the project and really drive it forward over the, the coming months and she's been absolutely integral to that so far so really delighted to have you on board Mary. Mary, what's it like working with the two of us just uphill all the way? Is it? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really enjoying working with you. Um, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying doing the branch affiliations and contacting the branch secretaries and um, encouraging them to affiliate to the project. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Well, welcome aboard and Hi. welcome to your thousands of adoring fans. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start a fan club soon enough. Anything exactly. else, Andrew? In well, yes, in, in addition to Mary, we've also taken on board a, a very talented young man called Jeff Monaghan, who we had the, the pleasure of getting to know when he was in London uh, during the summer and has agreed to work with us over the, the duration of the project. He'll be based in New York City, which is fantastic for us mm -hmm. because looking at our statistics over the, the last couple of weeks and indeed months, the growing audience that we're getting mm -hmm. in North America is very pleasing for us to see because we want to engage people around the world in this project. So Jeff is also involved in the project and working with us on a daily basis so that we can consolidate our audience, not for the sake of USI, but for the sake of the movement, because mm -hmm. what's very clear for us is that there's a real appetite for people to engage in this project and to participate, share information and ideas and having people like Mary involved and having Jeff involved as well as the team here mm -hmm. is absolutely great for us. Uh, so really pleased about the progress that we're making, the thousands of people, tens of thousands of people that are engaging with us on YouTube like this video clip but also on iTunes, on Snippet, on Google Plus it's really, really pleasing and mm -hmm. humbling for us, actually, the, the level of engagement. Mm -hmm. I think we'd like to say that we'd like to expand this as well. So if you're interested in working with us and engaging with us, we'd love to have your news on here. We can do it by Skype or any way you like. You can give us a video report of what, what's happening in your country or your organization, and we can edit it into the news report so that we can have a, a more rounded and more international feel to what we're doing. So we'd love to hear from you if you've got uh, Union News. And on that note, uh, let's look at some of the top stories from the, from the past week. Um, there is an election happening soon in a big country on the other side of the water in the United States. And um, a recent study has proved what we would have suspected, which is that politicians who grow up in union households or who come from working backgrounds are much more favorable to working people. And that doesn't mean just trade unions themselves, but anything related to working life. So things like paid sick leave, maternity leave, um, rights at work, all that kind of thing. Politicians, regardless of their party affiliation, if they come from a background where they were exposed to the labor movement, are going to be more sympathetic to workers' rights. So definitely something to bear in mind, uh, people who intend to vote in the US election. And uh, if you haven't registered to vote, we suggest you do so and make sure that you go and vote. Um, very important. Anything on the US election you'd like to comment on, Andrew? No, just that we've been, of course, following this very closely, which is why we've taken Jeff on board with the project as well. And there's been a whole series of labour disputes that, of mm. course, have been happening, whether it's in relation to Walmart or, of course, the Palermo's Pizzas dispute that we continue to support and to try and help in any way possible and for that reason we'll be having a, a webcast with some of the workers involved in that dispute Pal Palermo's Pizzas on Wednesday the 10th of October at 6pm UK time so we really look forward to having a conversation with our brothers and sisters who are involved in that dispute to try and help them get their message across so of course we keep a close eye on what's mm -hmm. going on across the pond and the elections, but in particular some of the, the disputes that have been happening, some of the gains that yeah. you know Labour unions have actually been achieved. It's been really impressive that we've, we've noticed uh, in the past 
few months, there's been most recently the Chicago teachers, yes. but there's been Verizon, there's currently the Walmart work workers, there's been Con Ed, the utility workers, uh, Paloma's Pizza currently running a really, really good campaign. Uh, and we'd encourage anyone to, to join that web conference and hear firsthand what, what's going on. And of course, uh, just north of the border, the, the students in Quebec have uh, also done extremely well. So there's a real um, revival of trade union activism in the US and, and it's working, it's winning and it's making a real difference. And it inspires us to see that. It inspires us to, to realize that uh, trade unions are fighting back across the world and we're winning across the world and we can turn the tide of austerity and uh, work together to, to build a better world. Um, on elections, there's one in Venezuela as well. Um, Hugo Chavez, the current president, is uh, facing re-election. And uh, he is a controversial and divisive figure. He has used Venezuela's oil wealth to massively reduce poverty in the country and uh, to improve the lives of poor people. Um, however, he is widely hated by the rich, perhaps not surprisingly. Uh, so that is definitely an election that we'll be following very closely because I think uh, it has... Uh, a lot to say about the role of the state in um, eliminating poverty and, and uh, development economics and a lot of things like that and, and basically not letting your country be run by, by looters and people trying to profit from it and particularly important for other countries with rich resources which are currently perhaps being targeted by multinational companies and not enough of it reaching the working people of those countries. Now, agency work. The Global Union Industrial has released a new report on the growth of agency work and labor brokers. The report called The Triangular Trap shows how agency workers earn less and frequently have worse conditions than their permanent and full-time colleagues. This has a destructive effect on union power, which is precisely why employers lobby for restrictions to agency work to be lifted so that they can employ more agency workers. Agency work provides a reserve army of labor for, with companies taking almost no responsibility for workers uh, which they can replace at will. Companies love that sort of thing, obviously we don't because uh, this leads to a growing precariat. This is something we've heard a lot of in the, in the past few years, this idea that there's a new social class developing of people who will always be preca precarious, they'll never have a secure job uh, and a reliable source of income and uh, this is definitely growing and we think worse for younger people um, the employment outlook for young people is not good at all particularly in countries like Greece and Spain where the unemployment rate I think is uh, above 50 percent and uh, along those lines the ITUC the International Trade Union Confederation has uh, launched a website called uh, Work Forecast and it's quite innovative and, and quite intelligent. You can go to that uh, work forecast website and look at the work forecast for, for your country. You can look up your country and it will tell you um, dismal, terrible, dire, uh, and maybe if you're very lucky, sunny, but I haven't seen any sunny out, 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 outlooks. But you can also directly from the website contact your Department of Labor or Labor Minister through social media and demand that they do something to create some hope and some decent work for young people. I think it's a fabulous initiative and should be congratulated and we'll do all that we can to try and give oxygen to it. And I think what you've just touched upon there, Walton, is perhaps the greatest issue facing the economy at the moment is the unemployed mm -hmm. of young people. In Greece and in Spain, more than 50% of young people are unemployed. The statistics just get worse and worse every month, you know, the whole belief that austerity is actually going to magically transform the economy, mm -hmm. as we've always suspected, is not coming to fruition. And, you know, 50% and more of young people in major economies in Europe are unemployed. You think about that in a school today, 50% of those who are leaving are not going to have a job, and the 50% who do mm -hmm. is going to be precarious work, part-time work, often seasonal work which really masks mm -hmm. the the level of unemployment and it's really disheartening yeah. and that we need to keep on banging the drum that there is an alternative and part of the role of USI is to try and make sure that we get that message across mm -hmm. because as we've seen in North America in particular people are winning the labour movement is winning in certain corners and there's nothing better than confidence mm -hmm. to 
help instill in other people that it, you can win and we can fight and we can achieve things together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll continue to raise the awareness about the issue of youth unemployment, particularly in the Eurozone, because as we've seen from the statistics this week, the Eurozone is now in contraction, it looks like, mm -hmm. and the unemployment statistics just get worse and worse. Yeah. There are some campaigns that deserve our attention and first is some, some good news. Uh, we ran a campaign, uh, we supported an ITF campaign recently for Saeed El Hayrek, a Moroccan activist who was arrested. A uh, very, very successful campaign, a lot of people got behind it, an uh, ITF campaign, Labour Start got behind it, we supported it as well. And uh, as a result of this, um, Syed has been freed. So that's a, a bit of good news. Yeah. And it just shows that campaigning works and raising pressure and raising awareness works and makes a real difference, mm -hmm. which is important because there is another campaign, another trade unionist who's been arrested. Uh, Yassine Zayed is an Algerian human rights defender who has been working to particularly organize people in the catering industry and uh, especially with a UK-owned company called Compass. Um, he was beaten and arrested and uh, the Global Union for Workers in the Food and Catering Sector, the IUF, has a campaign to free Yassin. So we would also urge you to sign up to that campaign and let's get our comrade free and safe as soon as possible. Um, just an update on another campaign and a reminder that uh, we reported maybe six weeks ago of uh, 305 uh, members of the Turkish Union, Havais, who work for Turkish Airlines, losing their jobs. Uh, that campaign is ongoing. They have not yet been reinstated. And more bad news from Turkey is that uh, 69 members of the Public Sector Confederation, the uh, KESK, have been arrested and charged with terrorism. Now, this is something that happens in Turkey with the people who oppose the government, uh, they face terrorism charges. This is clearly an attempt to attack the, t attack the Turkish labor movement. And once again, we need to highlight this and sign up to, to campaigns uh, which, which are, are asking for those charges to be dropped and uh, for, for those, those comrades of ours to be released. Uh, and uh, finally, Kazakhstan is a repressive regime. Uh, its press is one of the most restricted in the world. According to Transparency International, it is one of the most corrupt countries in the world and it ranks very low on democracy index, yet Kazakhstan has oil, which means Western companies are all over it and our old friend Tony Blair recently sold his PR services to the Kazakh regime. Last December, oil workers went on strike and several were killed. Many more were imprisoned, some of them with sentences of between two and six years. And currently, uh, there are some politically motivated trials continuing. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue to monitor those trials and uh, we'll work with the, the unions involved to raise awareness and to attempt to campaign to bring more democracy to Kazakhstan. Andrew, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I would just like to mm -hmm. compliment what you said, Walton, in regards to the issues within Kazakhstan, and we featured this very prominently with on our website and will continue to do so. There's also a number of protests that continue that we will highlight, and you can find more information on our website, usilive.org, and really encourage you to check out some of the articles and some of the horror stories that are going on within that country in relation to human rights and a fundamental human right is to be a member of a trade union. Just to recap on some of the USI campaigns, of course our solidarity with Greece campaign continues. There was a general strike on the 26th of September, highlighting the further scale of cuts on austerity measures within that country. And over the coming weeks and months, we will continue our campaign and to indeed intensify it as the social and economic and political conditions just worsen the rise of the neo-Nazis in that mm -hmm. country and Golden Dawn is a very worrying development for everybody, not only in Greece but across Europe and beyond and we will endeavour to feature more articles, webcasts, including meeting our good friend Kostas Lapovitsis to talk about some of the, the economic conditions within that country and some of the measures that could be taken to alleviate mm -hmm. the, the crisis. And our project in India goes from strength to strength and I want to thank people who are watching our YouTube channel or perhaps downloading this onto iTunes for the hundreds of hits that our 
our videos in India are getting about the work that we are doing with our partner organisation Prias. We've advanced several thousand pounds already to help some of the preparatory work for the new brick kiln season and we've been getting some fantastic articles including clips from inaugural union meetings, the, the training of organisers and it's really heartening for us to see that because I think what USI is trying to do as well as being uh, a source for information and news and campaigns and also to help other organisations campaigns we want to transform and help transform the lives of people on the ground we want to be able to not only help share information but build union power to help transform the lives of people so continue to check out our campaigns in India in Greece and also domestic workers that we will continue to fight for justice for domestic workers and a really exciting programme of work will be coming up soon where we'll be doing live link ups with my uh, domestic and migrant workers across the world using our technology which is I think bringing real added value to our movement. Andrew, you reminded me of something important there. Uh, today is the 4th of October, which means it's the anniversary of the Battle of Cable Street, when uh, the British Union of Fascists attempted to march through the east end of London in 1936 to intimidate the left-wing and immigrant community there, and people fought back and defeated the fascists, and uh, they never ever recover their position in the UK. And yet, as you mentioned with Golden Dawn, we're seeing the rise of fascist parties across the world uh, due to the financial crisis and it needs, it's something that we need to uh, maintain uh, real vigilance on and, and be sure to fight back and make sure that fascism gets no, no toehold anywhere at all. Uh, and also we'd like to just reiterate the call, wherever you are in the world, affiliate to USI, uh, your union branch, your union local, your co-op branch, your trades council, your regional or national uh, Union Federation or Workers' Rights Organization, we'd love you to affiliate to us and become part of a global network of organizations working together to enhance workers' rights and working class power across the world so that we can build an alternative to austerity. Once again, thank you. <laughs>